Okay. Let's see what my grouping's like. <sighs> Not too bad. Yeah, a couple high ones up in here. The black ones with the red and white fletchings, they're okay. They're not the best fucking arrows. But not too bad. We just picked up this blackout block. They say the arrow's supposed to come out easier. I doubt that. I really do. I don't think they do. But had to get a new rest for my bow. The way this works is this string attaches to your downward line on your compound. And then when it pulls it, this comes up which centers your arrow for you and when you release it drops out of the way so the arrow doesn't catch it so you're fletching it doesn't matter which side if it's going up or to the left you never have it going to the right because it'll shear it off but it doesn't matter which way it goes so which is kind of nice and this is a Trophy taker. Fast release. Not too bad though. I had a better grouping this morning than that. Just a little bit, but not too bad. Could be better. Like I said, I had a tighter grouping this morning, but oh well. Yeah, shooting archery, it can be expensive, like the new rest that was. $80 just for that but it's worth it gonna buy another one for my wife's because the fall away rest I got her is all spring activated but the arrow wants to jump off of it so once you draw it if it jumps off now you've just like lost your you know your where you're aiming at and there's two ways you can do it instinctively or sights um, my wife shoots instinctively. Um, I have sights on it, but I'm really, it's just a guide point that I'm using. And then I line up the tip of the arrow to wherever I want. So I'm just using that to gauge if I need to move left or right, up or down a little bit. You know. But I figure I'd do a little archery for Samurai Sunday. Since that's mainly what they used to use was a bow at first on the battlefield the Yumi bow which is basically a long bow and uh, as the different centuries went along they changed their tactics um, Odenaga the first person to try and uniform Japan he still used bows along with the matlock or flintlock rifle. I know that's not the Japanese name for it. The Japanese name means matlock rifle. Okay, it's nothing special. For those who like to get their panties in a bunch by not using the Japanese name. Um, 
but he would, since the rifleman had to reload, he would have archers set up behind them because the archers could keep flinging arrows while the rifleman reloaded, which made it a lot more efficient. So he was able to take on a mass amount of army with the very little amount of army he had and keep hammering on him and moving forward. So that's what he did, which is really, really smart tactic um, to do. Because it took anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds or something like that to reload one. That's from what I've seen on the research. Well, with an arrow, it's less than that. You just knock it and because what you see them now using the Yumi bow, you're not going to sit there and go, okay, you're just going to pull that sucker back, and just let it fly. You know. Pretty much 90% of the Mongol army conquered their areas with bow and arrow on horseback. The, the other 10% was actually engaging with the enemy with swords so that's pretty damn impressive i mean the mongolian horse bow holds the world's record for the longest the bow to shoot the, the farthest than any other and it still holds the record to this day in its way it's designed it is actually really really smart it has a free floating uh, buffalo horn inside it that kind of um, doubles the poundage and it whips the recurve, it snaps in there and um, whips it to double the force. So it's kind of a smart thing. But um, yeah, bow and arrow is actually really cool. It's really fun to do. Um, I was shooting that without my glove though, and I should have been wearing it. Um, cause you will start getting a blister on your finger. Um, we also have arm guards that we wear and the gloves aren't, the arm guards and the gloves are really cheap to buy. The most, if you want to get into it, is getting the bow, which that Sanlita is not very, I mean, it's reasonably priced. What to what I say about two hundred dollars for that, and if you want the bundle package, it's like two fifty, and it comes with a lot more. Um, my wife has a Genesis, which is a really good bow too, to start with. Um, it's got the separate limbs too. Um, most bows do now because they last longer. If you look at bows from the '90s where it's um, solid limb, the problem with those it start happening on my um, bear lightning I have. I can shoot it, but I don't like to. Um, the fiberglass in there, you start hearing it cracking. And it's because it's such a tiny area that the pin goes through for the cam that it starts cracking and breaking away. So that's why um, they pulled away from that design. It wasn't very really good. And they went with this one, double limb on top and bottom. Um, and then if you want to, we just got, you know, a bow stand too, which that was, we got off Amazon for like $30. I would suggest if you get into archery, get a bow stand. It, it, it's a lifesaver, so you're not laying your bow on the ground. And then that blackout block, it was about $100. We got that yesterday. And these yellow jackets are really, really good. You can buy new covers for them, and it's not expensive to recover it, you just do it yourself. Um, the bigger one that we have of the yellow jacket is actually for crossbow and eventually I'll be pulling that out because that thing's pretty impressive. You just blink and the bolt's gone. It's uh, 410 feet per second it's traveling at, so that's pretty impressive. It's not the fastest. Raven's got the fastest but I don't have over two grand for a raven. So, but they're good. That's all I have for you guys for Samurai Sunday. Hopefully you enjoyed it.
I know I did. I love shooting bow. Um, my wife does too. She didn't think she would. And she fell in love with it. It's it's a fun thing to do. I mean, even if you don't have much room in your backyard, you can still do it. If you have about 10 feet, you can still do it. You can still do it. Um, we don't have that much here, so we're about 10 feet away to shoot. So, in, if you're just going to be practicing, and you can also go to a Bass Pro. They actually have an indoor archery range. And I don't think it costs you anything to use it. I think it's free. So, there's another option if you want to try bows out. Um, they may actually have users that you can borrow. See if you like it or not. So, check them out. If anybody is interested in getting into archery, check out Bass Pro. Like I said, they all have a, a shooting range indoors. It's really nice. And it's air conditioned. Whereas today it's really muggy because we have another fire, not in this county, and another one. And all the smoke and ash is actually coming over here. And it's just making it miserable. But it's something we got to live with. So. Okay, guys. I hope you're all having a good Sunday. Samurai Sunday. Oh, and I'm going to be doing... See, everyone's liking the video I did on um, my sharpening, my polishing. So I'm going to be doing one on how to... How I sharpen fixed blades on a stone. It's actually really easy. You're not going to believe how easy it is to do it. It's easier than polishing. Trust me. So, talk to you guys later.